Welcome to another episode of Deep Mountain Security. Today I want to show you guys one way that you can make an executable file that you can run scripts with. Um, so I also have to say that you should only use this for good stuff. Anyways, um, so to start off we're going to be using an application um, called iExpress. And what this does, oh, and by the way, you need to run it with administrative privileges. Um, so that way it has privileges to do everything it needs. Um, and this comes, it, it, this is already on um, Windows 10 or whatever. Um, and this is useful um, for, let's say, for example, you have maybe a set of scripts that you generally run on a system to generate um, information about the system. Um, such as, you know, maybe you're using PowerShell commandlets to get IP addresses and stuff like that and internet connection uh, stuff for troubleshooting, you know, because if I open up PowerShell, I can um, always go ahead and run something like get net IP address. Um, oh, that's going slow. And as soon as that finishes... Wow, that's slow. Um, so running this will pretty much give you IP address information uh, about your computer. Um, but sometimes you want to gather lots of data on a computer or maybe a series of computers. And you could create PowerShell scripts or other scripts to do it. Um, but then you have to have those scripts signed and stuff like that if you're going to run things. Um, and sometimes, you know, uh, if you're moving around PowerShell scripts and batch files and stuff like that, then it's quite possible that um, uh, you might have issues in moving it to computers. Some computers, you know, depending on your level, different things, it may or may not get flagged. But then the exe file we create might get flagged as well. Um, but what we could do here um, is we could... Um, Let's go run an installation command and let's just uh, get IPs. Um, and then we're just going to go through some default stuff. And this is generally um, the step in which you would get like an, a, a EULA or something like that if you wanted to include something like that. Um, and then we want to go ahead and create a list of the files that we want in our package. So you can do something similar with um, uh, WinRAR, uh, which will allow you to compress stuff into a self-extracting archive, which you can then assign a file in there to be uh, executable when you um, try to go and run the um, archive. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and let's open up Notepad. Um, if I can spell it right. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and throw a couple of things in here. Um, so I'm just going to go through some of the stuff in PowerShell real quick. So let's go ahead and change to my desktop. Um, and then a couple things. We're going to take this get net IP address and let's go ahead and actually save this to a variable. Um, and then what we can do is we can output that to a file. We can go out file, um, and then we can specify the path to be, um, you know, wherever we want. Pretty much, we could put it on the C drive or something. But you know, who knows what you've got on your system? So we're just going to put it relative to my current directory, um, and let's just call it output.txt, um, and then dash input object or variable or whatever we're going to use IPS. Um, so you're going to notice that there's an output now, and if I go and open it up, voila, we've got this data from this computer. And you know, we could use like a, a, a where clause, and we could use if statements and stuff like that to kind of filter down through our data to specifically see stuff or specifically look for DHCP or, you know, whatever we might find useful um, to make troubleshooting faster for us. And that's just, you know, one specific event, example I'm giving right now. There's a lot of things you can do with something like this. Uh, but then I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to take this same stuff and put it right here. So we're going to do IPS equals uh, get net IP address um, format table. And then we're going to go out file uh, file path output dot txt input object as IPS. And then we're going to go ahead and save this. 
Um, and let's just go ahead and save this to my desktop. I'll just do everything there for now. And let's go ahead and save this as a PowerShell script, since that's essentially what it is. And we're going to have output uh, IPs, and we'll click Save. Um, uh, you know, so you can do stuff like that. Um, and I forgot to title it as a, oops, um, uh, a PowerShell script. That might be kind of helpful. So output IPs uh, dot PS1, that's a PowerShell script. So now if I save it, you're going to notice it'll be on the desktop. Uh, once again, I'm not doing any code signing here, so you might have to turn off uh, restricted settings on your um, uh, PowerShell console. But so now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and make a new one. And uh, let's just go uh, make, make a, um, uh, a batch script real quick. Um, so at echo off pretty much turns off the screen from displaying the C, whatever. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, let's go PowerShell um, output IPs. Um, and then that should run our PowerShell script with that. So I can go ahead and I can save this as um, output dot uh, let's see here, just name it something else. Um, test.bat, and go save it as all files, and save. So now we've got ourselves a nice little batch script. Let's go ahead and delete our output. And if we go ahead and run this, um, see if it actually runs a PowerShell uh, window or not. Um, and it looks like it did do some stuff in PowerShell, but I might have restricted stuff set on here. So if we go to um, get um, execution policy, uh, we're going to notice that I'm currently in unrestricted, so that's not an issue. Um, but there might be other things. Um, so, you know, kind of play around with it, you know. So go through and see what you can do um, to kind of run this stuff. Um, all right. So, you know, if we let's change to the desktop um, and then test.bat. Uh, and run it and then you can kind of see what it's doing you know I probably misspelled something IPs dot okay so you know it might just help a little if I did that um, now it knows to run it because you have to specify that when you're working with PowerShell um, and I might have to specify dot PS1 as well I don't know um, oops I saved that in the wrong Oh, okay, uh, let's try running that again. Um, now it's not recognizing my getting an IP address. Um, so make sure that you um, uh, um, spell everything correctly. Apparently I didn't, I put three Ds in there. And I should have opened that with Notepad. But anyways, so when you're working with PowerShell scripts, um, PowerShell ISE, which is the um, script, um, uh, in the integrated scripting environment, um, there it is. Um, let's, let's go ahead and run that again. Um, the integrated scripting environment, what it does is it just kind of makes an easier way for you to do stuff. So anyways, continuing on with our um, package files here, we can go ahead and click Add. And then we're going to go to our desktop and select these two wonderful documents. Click Open. And then we'll go to Next. And then so we're going to go Install Program. Uh, and then we're going to go test.bat, and now you, because this is old, you have to specify um, what you, how you're running this and, and what you're using to run it. Um, you could also run a post install command or whatever, uh, but we're going to go ahead and click next, uh, and then we're just going to um, leave everything else as default. Uh, let's go ahead and browse to the desktop, that's fine. We're going to go ahead and save this as my exe.exe. Uh, exe, haha. Um, we could hide the extraction and um, maybe we want to do that as well. So we'll click next um, and then hit, you know, just finish saving it. We can save a self extraction directive file. This allows us to go through our settings that we just made or whatever. Um, um, hmm. It didn't like that I probably put something wrong or I'm not running it as administrator might just help a little bit if I did that. I think I forgot to do that. So we'll go right run as admin. Um, now hopefully it'll let us do it. But it's a pretty straightforward um, way to run through everything right here. Uh, and so if you um, uh, 
actually happen to have something, you know, we could go select that and then go through and you're going to notice that, oh, voila, it created it and we're good to go. So let's make sure my output.txt is not here. Then I'm going to go ahead and run my executable. Uh, might help if I finished using that. Um, where did it go? Here we go, my exe. And then it's going to go ahead and run our stuff. Um, let's see here. Huh. So it might not have saved correctly. So let's go ahead and go back through that again. Um, go ahead and run as administrator. Um, hum. Oops. Might help if I went back through here. Um, open this up again. Create the package. Let's go ahead and modify it this time. Um, so, you know, we're going to go back through it again. Here's our stuff that we're running here. Um, we might want to make sure that that's the correct command to run. Um, but essentially, um, let's go to the desktop. Uh, nope, I didn't like that. So we want to change this to slash C, my bad. Um, ah. So CMD slash C, uh, and then go through. And I didn't catch that because we didn't go through it, went through it too fast, click finish. Now if we go ahead and run this um, executable, you have a nice little executable here. It'll go ahead and run your command. Um, but then I guess it didn't save the output because it probably tried to save it back into the um, thing itself. Uh, that's kind of funny. But, you know, if I put other things in here, um, like if I went and modified this and, um, oops, uh, let's go open that with a notepad. Um, and then we can go ahead and uh, maybe go notepad or Chrome um, just because that'll open it. Uh, both of those up and save that and let's go ahead and run I express again uh, as administrator go back through um, modify um, what we're gonna see um, and yeah fun stuff so uh, we're gonna go ahead and modify it just to make sure that it's doing everything correctly um, make sure he's got the slash C in there and it's still running test.bat and then it's going to take those files once again from the desktop because that's where I left them. Um, and it's going to replace our current um, file that we created, in the which case um, we, after this finishes, um, and it looks like uh, my um, antivirus is detecting it as an odd thing. And um, interesting. <laughs> So let's go ahead and uh, do that again. Let's uh, go back through and try it again. Interesting. And now there's our executable file. Go ahead and run that and see what happens, huh? And there's um, our notepad and it didn't open in Chrome, which is okay because it probably didn't know where to find it. Um, but so you can use this um, to create little helper scripts and stuff like that for you when you're going through and trying to troubleshoot a system or get specific data off of it. Um, and, you know, maybe there's a couple of things you want to do. Uh, I have to say, don't use them for malicious purposes because, yeah, I'm an ethical hacker, so don't use it for malicious stuff. Um, but really useful way to create an executable that maybe runs some scripts. Now, if you do, if you did everything in the batch file instead of in something else, then you could have an exe um, as long as it doesn't get um, uh, uh, you know detected by your antivirus and deleted like it looks like it probably did on mine. Uh, which is where code signing comes into play. Um, we could do all kinds of stuff in here. You know, we could run an IP config command, and we could maybe pipe that data somewhere and do all kinds of stuff. Uh, but anyways, that's all I've got for today. So thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.